Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to spawn and control mobs using our new custom architecture for MMO games using Unreal Engine, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to spin up a Unreal Engine server and this server is actually just going to be controlling mobs. So we're not using any replication here at all. So your other clients are not going to be directly speaking to this UE server. Uh, but this UE server is just going to be using some of its um, AI and stuff like that to spawn and control mobs. It's going to send these updates to our custom server and that custom server is going to basically provide all of this information to other clients so uh, the architecture was discussed in this post so i'll link that in the description and as usual uh, pretty much all of the steps to achieve this are available on this post so i'm not going to be going too much into the spawner itself um, i used uh, an asset for that which was pretty cool um, but obviously you can create your your own custom spawner your own ai you know the, the AI I'm using here is not really going to be like the real one right so it's just to demonstrate the purposes so uh, we're going to be focusing specifically on how do we integrate it with our custom server and pass this information back to, to clients so let's get started so perhaps we'll get started with a quick demo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this up I'm going to set the number of players to one this will be for my character net mode is play standalone and what I'll do is I'll uh, change a couple of advanced settings. So I will want to launch a separate server. So the separate server is the one that will control the mobs for me. And I'll disable this run under one process. So I don't want it to run in the same process, right? Okay, so um, with that done, let's basically launch this up. So when I start it, it launches my UE server in the background. And this is my character selection screen. So this client and the server are both connected with my custom server running in the background so i've added some logs to basically send when it's updating mob motion so i know it's now connected and controlling stuff so i'm going to go ahead and log in i should be in the area where the monsters are uh, present so this is the spawn area and the monsters are basically moving around in a random position random location okay so these monsters are controlled from this server there, there is no replication so uh, this server is sending the updates to my custom server and then the custom server is sending the updates to uh, this client okay so that's what's happening here so let's see how it's working together so let's have a look at how we actually achieve this so uh, we open up our map and this map is shared between the server and the client and what we'll do is we'll drop in a spawner system so the key here is that the spawner system will only be executed on the server so you don't want your client to be trying to spawn in mobs right like it wouldn't make sense so inside the the blueprints we're, we're going to make sure that it's only executed by the server so we'll have a look at that shortly and uh, like i say the asset i've used was this one so you don't have to use this you know you can create your own implementation so let's just see what it is that we're trying to achieve here so what we did was we defined an area where the mob mobs will spawn inside that area we can specify some spawn settings so here i'm basically saying spawn this class temp mob one so you know that i'm going to be basically changing this in the near future uh but it's there to to prove the principles right uh, i can provide it things like you know how many of those are to spawn and the scale and one other interesting thing here is this behavior tree, um, which again is not essential. You can basically have this tree defined somewhere else as well. You can maybe define uh, what to do inside the uh, actor class itself. So it's entirely up to you, uh, but this is nice to have. It's not doing too much. I mean, it's just finding a random point and then moves to it, waits a little bit and then repeats that process again. So nothing too fancy, but it does prove the principles. And um, yeah, what we're going to do is basically look at how do we then integrate this system with our server. Okay, so let's see what we have in this AI spawner. So I'm not going to go into all of the details, right, because um, the spawning itself is out of scope for this video. Uh, but there are some things that I, I just need to highlight. So for instance, I need to make sure that uh, when I begin play, I'm only going to be executing all of the stuff if uh, it's the server, right? So Previously, you can do switch has authority. So for instance, if you're spawning a server on a client, the server will have authority and the client will not. At the moment, I'm starting this as play standalone. So my standalone is also acting as a server, which is not good. So I've created my own little function um, inside the game instance 
which is checking uh, whether this is authenticated as a server or not. Now, there's some hacks in place for now, so it, it, the implementation will change later on. But basically, when you spin up your UE server, you'll provide it some authentication information, you know, your credentials for your APIs and stuff. And as long as those are valid, this will be true essentially, right? So I just needed to add this little function to make sure that it's also true. And then I needed to uh, set up my player socket integration. So this is the component that we used to synchronize our characters with a custom server. So like I say, I've tried to make it generic enough that we can use it for our mobs as well. So uh, that's what we have here. And uh, you can see that I'm basically setting up the map for the socket integration. And I'm just setting that this, this uh, socket integration is running as a server. So I'll have a look at those functions a bit later on. But in a very similar way, we basically then say configure the socket integration. So we'll also be receiving the player updates as well. So uh, when you're running this as a server instance, you're not going to be getting other monster information updates, but you will be synchronizing the players. Uh, the rest of it basically stayed as it was. So there wasn't any uh, other changes I needed to make on begin play. However, when you do spawn a monster, you need to basically keep track of it. So uh, there's this spawn AI events. So here is basically where I noticed that it was spawning this um, actor, like it was a spawn place uh, actor. So I, I basically needed to um, change some stuff in here. So uh, inside the BP spawn place, uh, this is the actor which would spawn your actor that you requested. So basically at the very end there, I basically say, okay, add the actor to be synced by my uh, system. So inside here, back into the AI spawner, um, I'm specifying the actor to be synchronized. I'm asking the player socket integration to grab the reference of the as uh, list of actors to sync. And then I'm gonna add uh, this actor to be synced. So I also provided a GUID. I, I, I need a unique identifier for that monster so that it becomes synchronized. So if I wanna get details about it, I can do so via this new uh, GUID. Uh, I'm not really using too much of it right now, as you can see, but later on when, you know, I, I'm gonna be doing some stuff with it, like attacking the mob and stuff, I'm gonna need the reference to that identifier. So now that we've added our actor to be synchronized, so we've taken the actor and added it to the list of actors to be synced inside the player socket integration. Let's sort of uh, refresh ourselves how that works. So inside uh, the graph synchronized actors motion, this is the same one that was used for our player. So where, when it came to our player, this list of actors was our player name and our player actor. Now it's gonna be your monster instance IDs and the actors representing those monsters. So we're gonna go for each one of those and we're gonna grab the actor's motion. So this is uh, working in the same way. So we have the actor reference, we can grab the location, rotation and velocity for each of those actors. And then we're able to handle the actor motion update. So the first thing that we'll want to do is basically check, have we uh, synchronized this um, active before. So on every iteration, we'll save the reference of the previous motion. If it doesn't exist, this is a new monster. We actually need to create the monster. So the update type becomes different. This is just a bit of a optimization for the custom server uh, because the query is going to be lighter if we know exactly what we need to do uh, rather than constantly checking, is this a new mob or, or is it an old one? So uh, it's just a simple uh, optimization here, basically. So if we're creating mob or updating it, the payload is actually the same, uh, other than the update type, we just need to provide it the monster IDs and the motion information. Um, if it did exist, we also want to just check, is the motion the same as what it was before? Because if it's the same, we don't actually need to do anything. But if the motion has changed, we do want to send that update to the custom server. Okay, so um, we basically check, is this a server? So in our case, uh, this is true. So we're gonna be creating the uh, monster update um, message and then sending that message to the server. Okay, so you can see that uh, inside here, uh, I'm also adding a bit of a print string, by the way. So this is what you've seen in the demo. So you know that this will only be executed by the server here. And 
I'm creating this uh, socket message structure where I'm specifying the update type. So as I say, this is either creating a monster or updating it. Uh, so perhaps later on, it will be some other stuff as well, like, you know, destroying the monster and things like that. Uh, I need to provide it the monster information. So this is the mob ID, mob instance ID and emotion. We're not really using the mob ID at the moment, but that is what will define what the monster appearance will look like, things like that. Um, and yeah, so that's the message that we're basically sending. And then in order to send it, we simply can convert that structure to a string and sending that over to our server. Okay, now that we've sent the message over to our server, we also want to process the receiving of that message as well. So uh, when you send the monster update, the server will then uh, evaluate, are there any players nearby to this monster? And if there are, it's going to send that update to those players as well. Uh, so that's what we want to do. And um, we've configured receiving of those messages in the configure socket. So basically here, this is where we bind on message received. So specifically, we want to um, process when the mob motion is updated. Okay, so uh, we convert the string message into a structure. The structure contains this message type. So when the message type is mob motion update, we know that we've received some uh, monster update, right? So let's have a look inside here. So this is where we also printed string this handling mob update that you saw in the demo. And what we want to do is basically take the structure. So this is the structure definition at this time. So this will likely change soon, uh, but the monsters will stay consistent, right? At least for a while. Uh, so we have this map of monsters. So we iterate over each key in there. So there could be multiple uh, monster updates uh, in one go. It's not always the case, but sometimes there will be a batch update. So um, we go over each one and we handle individual monster. So what we do here is uh, we check uh, the nearby, uh, nearby monsters that we've previously synced. So we check, is this monster already synced before? Uh, if it is, then we handle the updating of an existing one. Uh, if it didn't exist, we want to um, handle a new monster, right? So when it's a new monster, we want to spawn the actor. So this is very key. This is where the mo monster ID will be used. At the moment, we're not using it. We've, I've just created the uh, temp mob one actor, uh, but we will spawn the actor depending on the ID of the monster. Okay, so. Uh, that ID is passed through the UE server, it's passed to the Micronaut server, it's passed to here, and that's how you evaluate which actor to spawn. At the moment, like I say, I've just got the one, so I'm not using this mob ID to evaluate which monster to spawn, uh, I've just got the one. And then we add it to the nearby uh, nearby mobs data, and in the subsequent um, updates, we're going to handle the existing mob, and all we're doing here is evaluating the uh, monster motion, and then updating the actor from the nearby mobs data with that motion information. So that's all we need to do for now. Uh, this is like simple synchronization of that monster between the server. Uh, but later on, perhaps we're gonna um, synchronize other information as well. So uh, things like combat will happen async as well. So um, it, it will be handled differently. So we'll see how that's um, handled a bit later on in different videos. Uh, but that's all we needed to do for now. You know, if it's a new monster update, we spawn the monster and we keep track of it. Uh, if it's uh, an existing one, we update its information. Uh, very soon to come, we'll also get updates to remove motion. So inside um, configure socket, we'll have uh, remove players and remove mobs. So when either you come out the threshold distance, you're going to get this update from the server, from the Micronaut server. Uh, it's going to say, okay, you're, you're outside the distance now, you can remove that reference, so you will destroy the actor. So um, at the moment, I didn't put it in, but the server actually does support that. So that's how we're going to handle it there. So perhaps the next thing that we'll look at is the uh, mobs that we're spawning. So we've referenced temp mob one to be spawned. So uh, in the viewport, we have the skeletal mesh and it has some animations associated to it as well. That's actually the main thing that we need from the temp mob. Um, the rest of the functionalities will come from the parent class because we want to refactor the logic to uh, the parent class, which will basically be used as the foundation for all monsters. 
So inside here, the construction script is empty, the event graph is empty, but if we wanted anything specific here, this is where it would live. Now again, uh, this is to do with inheritance, right? So for example, maybe we'll have um, a class for wolves, and then there'll be another class for different type of wolves as well. So perhaps you'll basically provide logic which will, um, you know, basically inherit the things that are required. So in here, um, I, I haven't got too much logic yet. So everything I need is part of the mob base actor. So we can have a look at that now as well, mob base actor. Uh, and later on, if I want anything specific to a particular mob, you can add it to uh, that type as well. So, and by the way, these ones are the ones which will have the IDs associated to them. So for instance, mob ID one could um, mean summon me temp mob one, right? And a different monster will have a different ID, right? So that's how you'll know which actor to spawn. Uh, okay, so inside the uh, mob base actor, uh, we're gonna have some functionality. So um, for instance, on every event tick, I'm gonna want to smooth uh, the motion if it's a client. So this is in a very similar fashion to your uh, characters and players. So you, that motion gets updated every 100 milliseconds. So you don't want them teleporting around. You want to smooth that motion for uh, these uh, monsters. And you'll only want to execute this is, if this is a client. So basically, if this is uh, running on your player's computer, uh, because the server simply doesn't need this, right? So we've looked into how it works uh, in the previous video. So I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail for this one. And um, aside from that, there's not too much else going on here. So um, the only other logic that it had was the AI related logic. So for example, finding a random point and then going to that target. And again, this was actually provided through the spawning system. Uh, you can choose to, you know, like implement your own uh, functionalities here. So this is basically getting a random point on the map and then moving to that location. That's all it's doing right now. Um, but obviously you can have some other functionalities related to uh, to your mobs. Uh, so that's basically it for the actor as well. So there's, um, yeah, not much else to cover, I believe. So that's uh, basically it with how we could spawn and control the mobs using our UE server. As you can see, it's a lot more complicated than the traditional sort of network replication. And the reason for that is because, um, well, basically we want to achieve new heights for how many players can be in the same sort of instance, right? Or like the same shard. Because previously, if you had, you know, a hundred monsters, a hundred players uh, in the same sort of vicinity, all of that communication has to go through the single UE server. And that is essentially a bottleneck. So now what we can do is basically deal with that communication on a separate server, which we can easily scale up. And then the server instance that this UE server instance can simply control the monsters, right? So it's a lot less to deal with than it did before. So that's how we should be able to achieve those new heights for uh, players in a given vicinity. And yeah, obviously this is a lot more complicated, but it does scale pretty well, right? So that, that's kind of the, the thing we're trying to achieve here. So I think that's it for this video. Um, if you do have any questions, do raise them here on YouTube or perhaps uh, go on to the Discord channel and raise them there. I'll see if I can answer them or perhaps someone else in the community as well. So that'd be nice. And um, yeah, in, in the videos to come, perhaps uh, I'm going to start integrating the inventory system. So uh, that's just making it compatible with web WebSockets because I've already created it and it's HTTP based right now. Uh, and then after I've done that, I'll attach the stats to it and then uh, we can do a quick combat system as well. So uh, that will be to come and uh, yeah, otherwise best of luck and see you next time. Thanks.